Hello, welcome to Traditional Chinese Medicine Ideal Diet. My name is Christina Kapothanasis. I'm a licensed acupuncturist here in the state of Hawaii and a diplomat of Oriental Medicine under the National Certification Commission for Acupuncture and Oriental Medicine. I am also the Executive Director of the Hawaii Oriental Medicine and Acupuncture Association. Today we are going to continue our discussion of nutritional guidelines, if you saw our previous episode, and discuss a little bit more about the ideal diet. The ideal diet is trying to help people eat the right way to avoid any possible symptoms that they may have in the future, or to alleviate any symptoms and conditions that they have now, and try to reach the optimal health. Some of the symptoms you may be experiencing come from different systems, but they are all affected by a majority of the same foods that are prevalent in the modern diet. Some of the digestive discomfort may be bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation, acid reflux, and some more serious diseases like Crohn's disease or irritable bowel syndrome. A lot of respiratory um, conditions are also affected by the diet, especially conditions causing a lot of phlegm to be, to be coughed up, asthma, chronic bronchitis, frequent colds, respiratory tractants. There are also a lot of gynecological problems affected by the diet, mainly um, premenstrual syndrome, menopausal symptoms, irregular periods, and infertility issues. It can also affect a host of other symptoms. Those can range anywhere from insomnia to cancer, tremors from Parkinson's disease, or even pain. No one realizes the importance of what we put into our mouth. The right foods can really help alleviate symptoms from a myriad of conditions and illnesses, whereas the wrong foods can create a host of problems acute or severe chronic conditions like diabetes and high blood pressure, but we try to start as early as we can. It's never too late to uh, try to achieve optimal health through your diet. The first place to start. Um, how do we navigate the marketplace? These days you go into the grocery store and you have choices of fruits and vegetables from meat and eggs and uh, fish and chicken to TV dinners, ice cream, beer, and wine. There's a lot of foods in the grocery store that are not good for us and we need to be choosy when we go to the marketplace or our nearest grocery store. Um, some of the, the types of diets that we choose from are the traditional Chinese medicine diet. It is a system of nutrition similar to the idea used with herbal medicine. We also go by blood type diet, blood type being A, O, B, and A, B. And then we also use blood tests which check for food sensitivities and food allergies. Today we're going to be focusing on that most people, most everyone can omit from their diet in attempts of reducing heat in the body. In Chinese medicine, heat correlates very similarly to the idea of inflammation in Western medicine. A lot of these themes you can see in other diets as well, mainly the acid alkaline diet, the macrobiotic diet, and the mucus, mucusless diet. These diets all promote vegetables as the main source of our daily intake. And from our last show, you may remember that we tried to gently help you substitute out some inflammatory foods with positive substitutions. We were mainly working eliminating wheat and dairy, coffee, and pork. Today I would like to expand the list a little bit and give you some sample menu items to make the transition a little easier. The foods that create heat and or inflammation in the body in Chinese medicine work in the following way. They will create, create heat that burns off the positive blood and fluids in your body and leaves you dry and inflamed in the end. In the beginning when you eat these foods you may feel a 
So we say some kind of a fake yin excess. So you may feel calm when you eat sugar or when you have ice cream or when you eat wheat or different kinds of foods like that. That is because you're first in an inflammatory stage and then when you taper off the heat symptoms and uncomfortable symptoms start to come so you need to eat more to maintain that nice euphoric yin feeling. Some of the foods that are the worst, um, some of them we talked about last time and some of them are new. Wheat, wheat being white flour and whole wheat flour. They are one and the same, both quite inflammatory. Corn, we are more, f more focused on the corn meal and the corn flour products like cornbread and corn tortillas versus the fresh corn on the cob. Dairy, as we mentioned last time, being milk, cheese, yogurt, butter, ice cream, etc. Sugar, sugar is meaning white sugar, brown sugar, evaporated cane, sugar, and high fructose corn syrup. Most of the concentrated sweeteners are not good for us, including honey and maple syrup. Pork, as we mentioned last time, and some other ones that I'd like to add are peanuts. Peanuts out of the nut family is one of the most acidic and inflammatory nuts we can put in our body and creates lots of phlegm. Tomatoes and vinegar are also, as you can imagine, quite acidic and irritate a lot of conditions, not only digestive conditions. And finally, coffee. Coffee we mentioned last time. Coffee depletes the body of its fluids very, very quickly, and coffee can stay in the system from morning all the way until evening. It has a six-hour half-life, so what you drank in the morning, you have a quarter of it in you before you go to sleep. Definitely not good for conditions involving sleep. The problem is these ingredients are ubiquitous in the modern diet. Wheat and dairy, sugar, it's everywhere. So it may be a little bit overwhelming if you think of eliminating all of these foods at once. Wheat and corn, dairy and sugar, pork, peanuts, tomatoes and vinegar and coffee. Um, especially if we add on other restrictions from the blood type diet and any food allergy or sensitivity testing that you have taken. The only thing you have to do is have a plan. It does not have to be scary or overwhelming. You just need a plan and I'm here to help you. The easiest thing to do is to look at your foods in different categories. What kinds of proteins do you have left? Beef and chicken, turkey and duck, different types of fish and seafood, beans, eggs and nuts. What kind of grains are left? There's still rice that comes in several different varieties and colors, millet, buckwheat, amaranth, and different kinds of grains. Starchy vegetables and um, green vegetables, we tried to divulge a little bit on the difference between those in the last episode and how starchy vegetables need to be categorized with the grains. So things like taro and pumpkin, um, root vegetables, like a sweet potato would need to be with, included with the rice category. And then all of the other vegetables, green vegetables or non-starchy vegetables from leafy vegetables to zucchini, okra, eggplant, etc. And then finally we have fruits. So we'll think about it in terms of categories of what we have and not try to think of it about, think of it as what we cannot eat. We can try to be as creative as possible when we put those foods together. And though you may think this is a restrictive diet, actually you will probably be eating a more varied diet than you ate in the beginning. Because if you think of wheat in our typical diet, wheat can be the main staple. Wheat and or rice, probably the main staples here in Hawaii. You can think of cereals, pancakes or waffles for breakfast, sandwiches for lunch and pasta for dinner. Wheat, wheat and more wheat, usually. You can think of dairy also sneaking in and possibly pay, playing a predominant role in the modern diet, from milk on the cereal to cheese on the sandwich to ice cream. We're going to try to give you some ideas to move away from those choices. Uh, some people love to be creative. If you give them a list of ingredients, they can go to town and make amazing meals, whereas others, um, others of us may be not so excited we would just like to be given some recipes and go to it. In either case, I'd like to share with you some 
guidelines for the creative process and give you some examples. Now, first of all, if you think of your typical diet now, you probably don't have 50 to 100 dishes that you make, that you have in your head that you make for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Most people eat two or three different kinds of breakfasts and they have about 10 or so dishes that they cook over and over or they go out to the restaurants. Of course, we can all always go out and have a treat or we go to social functions where we can't control what we eat. But for our main routine, usually if we have three or four breakfast choices and 10 or so dishes to pick from for lunch and dinner meals, then we'll be okay. Another important aspect of the change is getting adapted to the new way of eating. It is not a diet per se, as in we're eating this way to get the symptoms under control or lose weight, we, and then we go back to our old way of eating, but it's really a lifestyle change that hopefully you can implement into your life and the lives of your friends and family so that everyone can be healthier in the long run. Um, as soon as you get into a new routine, it really is not that daunting. You just need to prepare. Preparing is for success in this kind of diet because a lot of restaurants don't offer healthy choices, definitely not fast food restaurants, um, very slim on the vegetables. If you think of the whole week and you try to get used to planning for, I need to go to the vegetable market and buy X amount of green leafy vegetables, green non-starchy vegetables and starchy vegetables, you stock your pantry with the proper grains and beans and you stop by the fish market or the meat market on the way home and you try to plan for the week. Also planning is important when you plan your meals. Uh, the optimal cooking um, plan is to cook every single meal but modern people don't have that much time working all day you're probably tired when you come home at night so if you can cook once and make enough for leftovers for the next day that is that is always helpful Take some burden off of trying to be as healthy as you can uh, I provided a few of the breakfast ideas that I eat and some people have recommended to me and I'd like to share those with you today one thing that I would like to note is the um, definition of gluten-free. Some people get confused when they go to the store and they're looking for wheat-free products and they see the word gluten-free. This label means it's very safe, there's no wheat in the product, whether it be bread or rice, gluten-free cereals, pasta, etc. That will also exclude other grains that contain gluten. Gluten is just the protein in wheat that most people find um, their allergies come from. Gluten is also found in other grains, including rye and barley. Um, some oats have gluten if they are processed on the same machinery as the wheat flakes. So as long as you look for gluten-free products for these different breakfast ideas, you will be um, doing just fine. One other thing that I like to do is make a pattern. If you have a pattern and you just pick from different categories to fill that pattern, it's also not as daunting and it doesn't take as much creativity. Most people like to drink a beverage with their breakfast. Instead of tea and coffee, the best alternative is some kind of herbal tea. There is lemongrass, ginger, mint, and hibiscus. You'll find a nice variety, a big selection of herbal teas at your local grocer. And if you are more of a milk drinker, they also have a variety of dairy-free substitutes, including rice milk. Unsweetened rice milk is still sweet, and they have unsweetened vanilla, soy, um, and almond milk. All of these are excellent alternatives to the regular cow or sheep milk. If you can pick from a beverage and a protein, a grain or starch, and a vegetable, then you will be right on track. The idea of eating vegetables for breakfast may also be foreign to some people, so if it's hard to start out the day with some fresh carrots and celery sticks, you might try 
eating uh, your regular breakfast and then having some vegetables a little bit later as a mid-morning snack. The goal is to get about 50% of the day's intake in vegetables, green starchy, green vegetables versus potato kind of root vegetables. Um, for those meat lovers out there, they have the substitution of turkey bacon. There are eggs that you can make, of course, and possibly some beef sausage. You could pair that with gluten-free toast and maybe some lettuce, like a BLT sandwich without the tomato and the pork. Um, you can also try a Japanese recipe I saw uses adzuki beans. They're small red beans and you, you cook them into a soup with a little rosemary, a couple slices of ginger, and the last 15 to 20 minutes you can add slices of kabocha pumpkin or taro cubes. And that is a nice hearty filling breakfast. Um, from the Chinese porridge standpoint, they have rice kanji. You make rice into a soup. You can add pieces of different kinds of meat or fish and vegetables and scallions and that makes a salty breakfast for those who like salty. And for those who prefer a little bit on the sweet side, a Greek dish, a version of a Greek dish called risogolo is made with, or you can also try millet in these recipes to substitute. Millet is another small grain. You can add rice or almond milk, a couple dates and a few slices of ginger and nuts. That also makes a very hearty warm breakfast for a cold day. You have all of your regular breakfast foods in gluten-free form. If you prefer to eat cereals, they have um, a nice selection of gluten-free cereal. They even have pancake and waffle batters that you can just add water and egg. Those can be found at the health food store and you can freeze those, make a batch, freeze those and then take them out and put them in the toaster for a quick breakfast. Another idea is baked mochi. Mochi is a rice that is pounded into a hard sheet. You cut it into small squares and stick it in the toaster oven for about 10 minutes. It puffs up like a popover. The is hard and crispy, the inside is soft and chewy and warm and you can pair that with blueberries and nuts and then of course you can try to put uh, a beverage on the side and hopefully a vegetable of your choice. An easy way to get vegetables in in the morning is to make burritos. There are rice tortillas and sometimes I put cucumbers, almonds and fresh basil or mint and roll that up and that's very simple, easy, refreshing breakfast to start off the day. For the lunch and dinners, it's also easy to pick from, a, from each category. You'll try to, ideally you'll have a quarter of the meal, some kind of protein, a quarter of the meal, a grain or starchy vegetable, and then half of the meal um, composed of green vegetables. Not only green leafy vegetables, but any colorful, including red peppers and zucchini. If you can pick from different proteins like turkey, uh, you can, they have ground turkey or turkey breast, you can make turkey meatballs with coriander, cumin, and sprinkle fresh cilantro on the top. You can make hamburgers, you can make steaks, you can make um, different types of fish, swordfish and shark are oilier, heavier fish, you can just put those directly into a hot searing pan, hot pan searing them with a little bit of salt, no oil required. Whereas more delicate fish like trout or snapper may be baked with a little bit of ginger or garlic. Doesn't have to be fancy, just bake it in the oven with a little bit of oil. Or you can also make salmon um, or tuna with Greek style, they love to put olive oil, lemon, oregano, salt and pepper. If you pick one of these proteins, then the protein is all taken care of and you can move on to the starch. Starches will be including our grains, so for example with the um, light fish like trout, maybe you could pair a light basmati rice, whereas the heavier fish like salmon or shark you may pair a brown rice. Uh, maybe with the turkey or beef, you could try to st um, steam some millet 
and possibly with some beans if you made a excuse me a protein we could also use beans for something like a black bean soup with oregano and cumin or coriander you can try a variety of lentils green lentils red black and brown lentils making them into a soup with different vegetables possibly a curry and um, sometimes even dips are for the protein hummus is made out of chickpeas or garbanzo beans made with um, tahini lemon garlic and a little cumin these are also wonderful proteins that can be paired with some kind of a grain like amaranth if you don't do well on grains you can always eat starchy vegetables for example taro making it into poi or sweet potato or kabocha pumpkin the sweet potato can be baked um, the taro is nice steamed steamed until very soft and pumpkin can also be steamed or baked these are easy ways to make grains if you don't prefer eating the grains plain you can add things to them like a drizzle of olive oil or flaxseed oil you can put different vegetables in them like celery or carrots and peas you can add um, fennel or mint or basil nuts you can be quite creative with the different ways you dress up your grains and then finally we'd like to pick two or three green vegetables to go with our meal lunch or dinner so we try to put one green leafy vegetable with each meal the people living here in Hawaii have a wonderful selection of green leafy vegetables from spinach to Swiss chard there's collards and beet greens Chinese broccoli um, also called jielan there's kale and we have amaranth greens they call Chinese spinach um, choy, um, and dandelion greens I think those are some of the selections here in Hawaii those are easily steamed and drizzled with a little bit of olive oil or flaxseed oil you can add lemon to those since we try to stay away from the vinegar and you can also stir fry those if you heat a little bit of oil with either garlic or ginger or onions until fragrant and then add the greens you can stir fry them very quickly if you prefer more crisp vegetables or you can cover them and simmer them until they're nice and soft in addition to a green leafy vegetable you can also pick from different vegetables like zucchini and eggplant bell peppers okra snap peas silk gourd winter melon the list can go on and on um, you can make those into different soups you can bake things baking is easy way to make vegetables taste sweet for example zucchini and carrots and eggplant can be roasted with um, some thyme or oregano or rosemary and on some olive oil salt and pepper that's very easy throw it in the oven and you're done steaming things a very easy way you can steam um, you can steam okra you can steam yamaimo or the mountain potato you can steam um, green beans and silk gourd silk gourd they call sigua that can also they can also be stir-fried stir-frying you just need to add a tablespoon of oil your favorite spices until they're fragrant and then stir the vegetables in until the desired tenderness or cover for soft vegetables this is the easiest way to stay on track with getting as much vegetables as you need for the day and as long as you do a little bit of pre-planning you should be fine for having enough food and not needing to make each meal or being stuck outside with nothing to eat but fast food or plates that are lacking in vegetables this diet is not perfect for everyone but it is a very good start it eliminates a lot of the and uh, in aggra aggravating inflammatory foods that cause most people trouble as I've seen through the several different types of patients that have come into my office but usually we just try to take out as little as possible to get results we don't want you to feel restricted we just want you to feel better and hopefully you will come to enjoy these meals because they are quite wholesome 
when you start a diet like this, you may be a little bit hungry for the first week because um, when you take out all those inflammatory heat creating foods, you're left with a little bit of stomach fire until the digestive system heals and that will make people have ravenous appetite. But don't worry, that will pass very quickly. I hope that you can implement some changes and if you have other questions about more specific diets for more serious conditions, I hope that you could give me a call or email me. Those things will be added at the last screen of the show today. Um, we can discuss further instructions for diet including blood type. Blood type O will have more heavily uh, reliance on meats and proteins and the Achilles heel of O type is the grains. They do poorly on grains and starches. Whereas blood type A is opposite. They do better on grains, fish, and beans, and less so for the heavy meats like beef and lamb and chicken and turkey. We can also take a look at any food sensitivity, food intolerance testing for your specific needs. But I hope that you have a good start from this and stay tuned in time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.